the next thing we look at is how to transpose a partitioned matrix. Now, last week we looked at how we could march through a matrix in order to transpose it. Here we're going to generalize some of those insights. Okay, so let's consider a matrix A and its transpose. Here we partition both A and A transpose. Let's focus on the red elements. This particular submatrix has the same elements as this submatrix of A transpose, except that we notice that this matrix here is transposed to become the corresponding submatrix of A transpose. Let's look at this submatrix of A. We notice that it is moved to this position in A transpose, and the elements themselves are transposed. What do we notice? In order to take A to A transpose, we transpose the submatrices of A. That's what you would do if these were just scalars, except that each of the submatrices themselves then have to be transposed as well. If you take matrix A and you partition it into submatrices, and you then want to transpose matrix A, what you notice is that if you look at sort of the diagonal matrices now of A and A transpose, each of these symbols, each of these symbols that denotes a submatrix of A is itself moved as if they were scalars and the matrix was being transposed. For example, these two were swapped. But then in addition, each of those matrices themselves must be transposed. If you look carefully at what happened here, that's exactly what happened. What happens if we do this with scalars? Well, notice that here, each submatrix itself is just a scalar. And if we transpose that, we get this right here, except that each submatrix itself must be transposed. But notice that if you have a scalar, for example, 2, and you transpose that, well, you can think of that scalar as being a matrix, a one-by-one one matrix. And if you transpose a one-by-one one matrix, you get that one-by-one one matrix back. So a scalar transposed is just that scalar. And you get right back to the original definition of the transpose of a matrix. Okay, let's look at some special cases. If you start with matrix A and you partition it into rows, and we saw this last week, if you transpose that, you would want to put that column of symbols and transpose it into a row of symbols, except that each of the symbols themselves ends up having to have a transpose on it. And what you notice is that what was a row in matrix A becomes a column in A transpose. And that just confirms what you saw last week. Similarly, if you start by partitioning matrix A into columns and you transpose it, you need to take those symbols, make them into a column of symbols, but then you need to put a transpose on each of those symbols as well. And lo and behold, a column of matrix A becomes a row of A transpose. And we saw that last week as well. Here's the special case of where we partition the matrix into a 3x3 three three partitioned matrix. And this is going to become very important. What happens if you transpose it? Well, you have to transpose the symbols and put a transpose on each of them. But then you recognize that if you transpose a row vector, what you end up with is a column vector. Transposing something twice just undoes the transpose. So what was the row vector A10 transpose now becomes the column vector A10. What happens to the element in the middle? Well, the element in the middle gets transposed, but then we recognize that it's a scalar, so you just get that element right back. So in summary, transposing a partitioned matrix means view each of the submatrix as if it's a scalar, transpose the matrix of symbols, or submatrices, and then transpose each submatrix or put a transpose on each of the symbols.